To this day, when I look at resumes of junior developers looking for their first full-time positions, if they have created websites for actual businesses in the past, I already know those candidates know how to deal with clients and users. Those junior developers get callbacks. What is up everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. So it's 2022, we're in for another heck of a year. January already flew by. It's time to make a change. This year, I want you to make a change. I want you to be a developer in 2022 and change your life. Today, I'll be covering everything that you need to know in order to become a developer, a front-end developer to be exact, as soon as possible. I won't go over all the reasons on why I think one should become a developer in 2022 and how literally life-changing it can be, because I cover those reasons on my TikTok. So you can check me out on there too if you want. Before we go into it, I do want to elaborate a little bit more on why I said front-end developers specifically, but if you're not interested in this intro stuff, feel free to skip into the main content right away. You can find all the timestamps in the description. As I was saying, why front-end specifically? Why not back-end? You may even wonder what front-end or back-end even is altogether. No worries, I got you. Front-end and back-end are specialized fields of web development. A front-end is, in simple words, everything that a user sees and interacts with when they're on a website. Back-end is everything that the user doesn't see that happens behind the scenes, like server logic, calls to the database, etc. But we're not here to worry about that. The reason we're picking front-end development for our journey is because it's considerably easier to get started with, it's visual, and there's instant feedback when we make updates to our code. And lastly, companies are more likely to hire self-taught junior front-end developers rather than back-end ones. Not to say that companies don't hire self-taught junior back-end devs, of course they do, but number-wise, there are a lot more junior front-end positions compared to the affirmation ones. One last thing to note, this video's purpose is to outline a general guide for you to follow in order to become a self-taught developer. I wish I could fit all my knowledge into one video, but that would frankly be impossible. You might hear some terms that may sound like gibberish, but that's only because it's up to you to research and learn those terms. Now that we have a basic understanding of what front-end is and what this video is about, we're ready to jump right in. HTML. This is the first thing anyone who's getting into web development has to learn. HTML is a markup language that is used to structure a web page and its content. If we were to think of a website as a human body, then HTML would definitely be the skeleton of that body. Now, while HTML is not really that difficult to learn and understand, it might require some time for you to know how to write valid or semantic, as they call it, HTML. See, HTML is a very loose language, a very chill, if you will. You can definitely get away with writing some dirty HTML code just to get things to show up on your screen. But if you want our website to rank up high on Google searches, as well as be accessible by users with disabilities, then knowing how to write proper HTML is very important. With that said, I don't think you should spend too much time on learning HTML. I think a month would be enough time for you to grasp the fundamentals of HTML. In my opinion, the best place to learn HTML is freecodecom.org. Freecodecom is a nonprofit learning platform that has some of the best free interactive material out there. This is actually a great way for you to start writing code right away without having to set up your local environment or download any code editors and you get to wet your toes a little and see what programming is all about. And did I mention that it's actually completely free? If at any point you decide that programming is not for you, no strings attached, no money lost. It's literally a no-brainer. The cool thing about learning HTML is that it goes hand in hand with the next technology you will be learning, CSS. CSS is used to style and lay out web pages. Continuing with my previous analogy, CSS is the muscle, skin, and maybe even clothing of your website's body. The reason why I mentioned that it goes hand in hand with HTML is because CSS is nothing more than rules that target specific HTML elements in order to alter the font, color, size, spacing of that element, or even add animations to it. See, without HTML, there is no CSS, but without CSS, a website will look something like this. When we add CSS into the mix, you get something that looks like this. And that is a big difference. This is where a little bit of memorization will come into play though. Because of the fact that CSS is basically just rules, those rules will have to get ingrained in your mind. For the most part, what you'll want to focus on are Flexbox and Grid. If you learn those two at a competent level, then trust me, you'll be able to achieve just about any layout you see on the internet. How much time would I spend on CSS if I were to go back? I would give CSS a month or maybe even two of complete dedication, starting from the basic things like how to style elements and then getting deeper into complex layouts as well as transitions and maybe even animations. Where would I learn CSS? 
good news. Free CodeCamp has an entire section dedicated to CSS. Now at this point, I would suggest you start considering spending some money in order to get access to some other resources. Now, I'm not gonna get into how reliable Udemy is because it can certainly be a hit or miss. But when it comes to courses that I'll be mentioning here, then you can take my word for it. These courses are well worth it. I just want to make a little note here that I'm in no way affiliated with the creators of these courses, nor do I gain anything out of them. I just genuinely think this is great material. But as with all things in life, you should always do your own research. With all that said, the course that I would recommend for diving deeper into CSS would be Advanced CSS and SAS by Jonas Schmedman. I'm gonna make a big parenthesis here and I do wanna talk about real world experience. So fast forward to about two or three months from now, you're familiar with HTML, CSS, you're able to use a code editor like VS Code, for example, and hopefully you have a few projects under your belt. Let me just say that learning HTML and CSS alone is already a game changer. By now, you should be able to create marketing pages that actual businesses would benefit from. This is where I want you to switch your mindset from I'm just learning how to code to I can get paid to code. Because if you think like that, you'll start seeing opportunities around you. This is the time that I would ask family, friends or acquaintances to see if they need a website. Usually, if someone is starting a business and is in need of a site, all they really need is to get their brand out there and a place where people can easily get that brand's contact information. That's where you come in. With the skill set that you now have, you can easily build a stunning website with a fully functional contact form. Don't be afraid to charge people for your skill set and time. It's very common to feel that since you're just starting out, you'll just do it for free. Maybe you don't even feel that confident in your ability to actually offer something valuable, but I'm here to tell you that your skills are already wanted, needed, and you deserve to get paid for them. You're basically getting paid to learn at this point. In any case, those websites will make a world of difference on your resume. To this day, when I look at resumes of junior developers looking for their first full-time positions, if they have created websites for actual businesses in the past, I already know those candidates know how to deal with clients and users. Those junior developers get callbacks. And now it's time to learn JavaScript, the language of the web. In our analogy, JavaScript is the brain of a website. Anything on a website that is dynamic, like comments, number of likes, or even and complex animations, those are all handled with JavaScript. These are the main things that you should focus on when it comes to understanding JavaScript. You wanna focus on primitive data types like numbers, strings, and booleans, loops and conditionals, objects and arrays, functions, which are basically the fundamental building block of your program. Classes, debugging, and I can't stress this one enough actually, this is the process of finding and fixing errors in your code, and asynchronous programming. This is especially important when you need to communicate with a server, which is very often the case. Uh, when it comes to this, spend some time learning about promises and async await. If some of these words sound scary, don't worry, that's normal. The process of learning a programming language with zero programming experience can certainly be daunting, so it's normal to feel lost most of the time. Hell, even all the time. But you're figuring your way out of things. Even when you feel lost, it's also part of the learning process. So just take it one step at a time. Where do I recommend you learn JavaScript? I know I'm sounding like a broken record, but <laughs> Free Code Camp is actually a great place to learn JavaScript. I do want you to explore more resources, some of them being the Complete JavaScript Course by Jonas Schmedman, as well as JavaScript The Complete Guide by Maximilian Schwarzmuller. Both are exceptional and you can go wrong with either one of them. Now, it's hard to say how long you're going to spend on learning JavaScript. One thing's for sure, you have to be creating your own projects on the side and learn by doing, not just by watching. Uh, having said that, depending on how much time you dedicate to studying, achieving a basic understanding of JavaScript could take anywhere from two to three months all the way up to six months, if I'm being honest. Now, moving on from JavaScript, we're gonna talk about React. And React is a library of JavaScript a ready-made toolbox, if you will, that helps us create dynamic user interfaces with a lot more ease than if we were to just use JavaScript itself. React breaks down pieces of our website into components and allows us to handle those components individually, as well as coordinate and bring them together to form the website in its entirety. The following are the topics that you should learn in order to get a good understanding of React. JSX, this allows us to write HTML in React. Functional versus class components. Uh, a little note here, class components are actually deprecated now, but you should still be familiar with them because they still live in a lot of code bases out there and you should know how to convert them into functional ones. Props, which is the way to pass data from one component to another. 
state. This is an object that holds the component's information at a given moment. Hooks and lifecycle methods. Routing, which is how we deal with navigating through pages in a React app and understanding how it differs from a traditional website. You would also focus on rendering lists and all the intricacies that come with that. A state management library like Redux and why we use one. And I think that's it for starters. If you have a good understanding of JavaScript, then React shouldn't be too hard to understand because at the end of the day, React is just JavaScript. With that in mind, I think learning React at a competent level would require at least a month if I'm being optimistic. Personally, if I had to go back and do it all over again, I wouldn't change a thing because I owe my complete knowledge and understanding of React to Maximilian Schwarzmiller's course, React the Complete Guide. His course is excellent and the way he breaks down React concepts are second to none. And it's guaranteed to take you from zero React knowledge to being a well-rounded React developer. Now let's talk about job hunting. Even though I'm putting this section at the end, by no means does it mean that you should do the following things last. What I'm about to mention in this section are things that you should put into practice while you're learning. With that in mind, let's get into it. The most important thing throughout this journey will be networking. I can't stress this enough. Try to integrate yourself into as many communities as you can. And if possible, find a mentor because that will speed up your learning process dramatically. Being a part of community will keep you going even if you feel like quitting. So don't underestimate the importance of it. I actually go over this on one of my last videos. Make sure to check that out. Another thing you should be doing is keeping your LinkedIn profile looking crisp. I'm planning on making a dedicated video on some tips on how to maximize your reach and opportunities you get through LinkedIn, so stay tuned for that. But basically, you want to make sure that your LinkedIn profile screams that you're a developer. Even if you're not, it doesn't matter. Fake it till you make it. Another point is portfolio, incredibly important. You need a personal website that houses the most impressive projects that you've worked on. And if you want an exact number, I say three to five projects, make sure they're all stunning. Those projects need to showcase your understanding of JavaScript, React, HTML, maybe even some authentication, as well as handling user input. The more visually appealing your portfolio is, the more likely it is to impress recruiters. So you've got your portfolio, you've got your LinkedIn, time to talk about your resume. First and foremost, you'll want to have a skill section. This is where you will include all the skills and technologies that you've learned throughout this journey. Now, depending on the number of them, I recommend breaking everything down into these categories. Languages like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, technologies, which would include React, Redux, etc., and tools. I understand that since you will be looking for your first job as a developer, your experience section may lack or may even be empty. If you have any sort of experience from your current job or any of the past ones that have transferable skills that could vaguely be related to programming, then I recommend you include those, showcasing those transferable qualities. If you follow my advice from earlier, and if you're lucky enough to have created websites for others, even friends or family, this would be a great place to include them. Otherwise, not including an experience section in your resume is also fine. You will want to have a project section that showcases three of your best projects, bullet points on what those projects are about, as well as the technologies that you use for each of them. Under the education section, if you do have a bachelor's degree, then obviously I would include that and not bother with anything else. For someone who doesn't have a degree, then I would recommend filling this section with certificates from the programming courses that you have completed. Obviously, I don't even have to mention this, but please include a link to your portfolio and make sure that there are links next to each one of the projects on your resume so that the recruiter can easily navigate to those. A few closing words on this section would be to start applying as soon as possible. Don't wait until you feel ready because honestly, you will never be ready. And if you do feel ready, then it's already too late. You should have started applying months ago. And just know that your first few interviews are going to be bad. Just try to get those out of the way as soon as possible and then ace your next ones. Some additional and necessary things that you should fit into your learning are basic usage of Git, understanding of code hosting websites like GitHub, fundamental understanding of a package manager, for example, NPM, and some basic Linux commands to navigate through a terminal. I do wanna close this video by saying a few parting words. The learning material I mentioned on this course is by no means an end-all be-all. Everyone is different, so some of you may learn better through books, or maybe a different instructor goes at a pace that's more comfortable, or whatever the case may be. My point is, Make sure you look for other learning resources 
and try to find the one that best suits you. These were just the ones that I found helpful. But the cool thing now is that since you know what you should learn, you know what to look for. And I want to be frank with you. This will not be an easy journey. I'm not saying that to scare you. I just want to give you all the facts so that you know what you're getting into. There are going to be a lot of frustrations, a lot of losses, and even moments where you're going to feel like quitting. But if you can just push through those, the feeling of accomplishment, as well as how positively life altering this experience will be is very much worth it. Thinking like a programmer might seem like a completely foreign and an intuitive thing at first, especially if this is your first time being exposed to programming, but I wholeheartedly believe that anyone can get to a point where they can at least understand the basics of programming. If I did it, so can you. With that said, at some point throughout all this, you have to be honest with yourself. Like I said, while I do believe that anyone can get to a point where they understand the basics of programming, not everyone can be a programmer. You'll have to be okay with always being a student and always having to learn. And most importantly, you'll have to be able to sit in front of a screen for hours and hours at a time, especially when you're in the zone. I'm not proud of it, but there have been times that I haven't gotten off my chair for way too many hours that I'm comfortable even saying. <laughs> but anyways, as I said, I'm not trying to scare you. If you do decide to do this, you'll figure out on your own if you're up to the task or not. I sure hope you are. And if you don't believe in you, believe in me that believes in you. You're all gonna make it. Just take it one step at a time. Thank you so much for sticking with me all the way to this point. If you found this video helpful, or if you think that anyone in your life could benefit from this, then please share this video with them, like, and subscribe. I have more videos coming to help new developers get into the industry. Until then, stay safe and keep coding. I'll see you all next time.